How do you describe those things? How did it come about? Well, in the first place, only a Pinoy no, will get me as part of the cabinet. I doubt if uh, other Why presidents would you say will that? do that. Why would you say uh, that? Because uh, uh, I, I was clearly overtly a socialist. No? And uh, for example, for the military, there's no distinction. No? A socialist is a communist, no, etc. No, wala silang ganung uh, nuancing uh, dito. Kaya nga, some elements of the military and uh, the political elites at the time look suspiciously at me being part of the cabinet. Kaya nga yung binigay sa akin, it's just a very small office. No? Political advisor. Presidential political advisor. No? Uh, yun yung, uh, yun yung uh, role ko. Kalawa, my role is one of the most difficult. Because you are the messenger of bad tidings. You tell the president what he doesn't want to hear. Most cabinet secretaries, ang sasabihin sa presidente, puro positive about their departments, dahil kailangan nilang i-preserve or i-increase yung kanilang budget, no? uh, because these are huge departments. Ako, meron akong small staff, no? at uh, yes, kasama ako sa cabinet meetings, pero I don't run government. So the president can accept or reject my advice. Most of the time, they were rejected. <laughs> no? uh, dahil nga, uh, being a messenger of bad tidings is not the best job in the cabinet. No? Tasabihin mo sa kanya, honestly, boss, medyo mali yan. Boss, ito yung problema. Boss, ito yung mga kalaban. Likado yan. Sabi nga sa akin ni Pinoy, no? problema sa'yo, Ronald, sasabihan mo ako ng mga problema, araw, eh, uh, kwan, ah, hapon. So hindi ako makakatulog sa gabi. Ano si si Pinoy kasama sa personality niya. Sino seryoso na ito eh. No? Sino seryoso niya 'yung sinasabi mo? So usually pag pinaabot mo sa kanya 'yung masamang balita o problema, hindi siya makakatulog, no? Uh, very conscientious siya, no? Pinag-aaralan talaga niya at saka uh, dinidibdib niya. Unlike a lot of uh, like most politicians, no? 'Yun 'yung kanyang kwan. Tapos sinitingnan niya 'yung implication hindi lamang sa kanyang present governance, kundi for the future. No? Uh, it's a different thing, dito sa sinasabi ko, pero halimbawa, some of the members of his cabinet gustong gastusin yung mga resources ng gobyerno, halimbawa GOCC, SSS, GSIS, para maging popular. Hindi lamang si Pinoy, kung hindi yung kanyang gobyerno at yung mga tatakbo later uh, after his term. So, si Pinoy, very conservative. Hindi natin pwedeng ubusin ang pondo ng GSIS. Kailangan mas maging sustainable yan for future presidents, for future governments. Kailangan huwag natin uh, ubusin ang SSS, etc. So, may ganun siyang uh, uh, conservatism. No? Kung maki- kukumpara mo halimbawa kay Digong, ubusin yan. No? <laughs> ubusin yan. No? Uh, taasan i-triple ang sahod ng mga sundalo at saka pulis without studying how this will impact our fiscal status. No? Na ngayon, pinoproblema natin. Diba? Yun, yung, yun yung kaibahan, halimbawa, between Pinoy and Digong. No? Si Pinoy, nag-iwan ng 1 trillion in savings kay Digong. Si Digong, nag-iwan ng uh, uh, almost uh, 13.5 5 trillion na utang. Yeah, pero may pandemic diba? naman kasi. I mean, yun ang excuse nila. Yes, pero kung hindi deconstruct mo yung pandemic, hindi ganun karami yung napunta sa sa pandemic dito sa dito sa inutang niya. Ha? Hindi hindi ganun, hindi ganun karami, no? Halimbawa, ba- vaccines. <coughs> marami sa marami sa mga vaccines ay libre, no? Maliban yung galing sa China na overpriced, no? So, ganun yung 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 inubo mo kanina no yan yung kwan yung mga mag-expire na mga medicines no mga mag-expire na binili no na inexpose ni Manny Pacquiao so itong uh, kwan yung mga kwan mo uh, laptops overpriced laptops nangyari yan no yan ba ay dahil sa kwan sa pandemic no so yun dapat i-deconstruct natin na uh, yung kasi yung paliwanag lagi nito hindi may covid eh hindi may pandemic eh i think that's uh, uh, not uh, Not that true, no? Yung, yeah, uh, yeah. yung, yung classic excuse. Ronald, was there a moment that 
that uh, we can talk about the shortcomings sh- shortly but uh, yeah were there moments na impressed ka kay Pinoy na okay like this is a singular president we have had na parang this is something special that you felt proud and you felt at least happy that you joined his cabinet because i'm sure you also had a lot of misgivings a lot of worries being part of the cabinet because lahat ng problema you'll also inherit that that could na impressed ako dahil sa changes sa kanya as a person as a leader no Uh, nung kilala ko siya as a congressman, as a senator, ibang-iba siya when he became president. No, parang yung nung congress siya at senator siya, he just wants to maintain the Aquino name no, sa political landscape. Nung naging presidente siya, nag-scale up siya in terms of eloquence, in terms of uh, hard work, in terms of uh, 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 learning, no, listening. No? Uh, halos iba siyang tao eh. do sa pagkakakilala ko sa kanya before he became president. Nag-scale up siya, no? Ni ni, ni hindi ko nga iimbitahin niya para magsalita sa mga forum namin eh. Then ang tingin ng anuman sa kanya, hindi naman siya ganoon ka-eloquent. Pero nung naging presidente siya, ba, bumalik magsalita, no? But that that's just the tip of the iceberg. Pero mo, uh, yung sinasabi nila noy noying, that was exactly the opposite of Pinoy, no? Then hindi natutulog 'yan eh para pag-aralan lahat ng pag-uusapan kinabukasan. At dahil meron siyang photographic memory, hindi niya makakalimutan yung sinabi mo. So hindi mo siya pwedeng bulahin. At ikatlo, napakalinis niya, no? Wala kang wala kang masasabi na 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 corruption na nakita mong nangyari Bye. under his watch. Perhaps may mga nangyari within the government. Pero yung immediately nakikita mo around him no uh, after nine years of gloria makapagal arroyo three years of era eh makikita mo yung kaibahan no makikita mo yung... perhaps uh looking back i would have wanted him to be more ruthless no more cynical no to good sustain Machiavelli. good Machiavelli. To sustain, a little bit no to sustain his uh, political agenda dahil yung landscape are all uh, ano eh rent seeking cartels dynasties warlords no etc kailangan durugin mo itong mga elements na ito no at magsimula ka magcreate ng a new political movement no? na it's a war eh, no and in a war no ay dapat may certain level ka ng ruthlessness at saka decisiveness. No? Sabi mo, Machiavelli yan. Hindi ako nagsabi noon. Eh, no? <laughs> yan, good Machiavelli, di ba? <laughs> Machiavelli. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, Ronald, so you said, malinis, uh, matalino, or at least steps up to the plate, uh, to the moment, to the occasion, uh, con- conscientious. Someone else also comes to my mind, uh, especially when you said, "But not as brutal or or or, or Machiavelli." As, uh, <laughs> that's Lenny, right? I mean, if you look at Lenny Robredo, right? I mean, she she fits all of that, you know, Malini's progressive, grassroots driven, etc. But if there's one critic you can make of her is that hindi siya politiko, right? She, she became a politician who didn't have some of the attributes of a politician, and and perhaps that's ultimately the explanation why. This enabled the other side. I mean, I'm not blaming her. I'm just explaining this because I see some continuity between Pinoy and Lenny. Except for me, Lenny is even more of a political outsider and had more grassroots progressive. Yes, exactly. That Pinoy. So in a way, she's an improvement on Aquino yeah. in terms of progressive credentials, etc. But the ruthlessness is even lower, perhaps. Right? I mean, let's talk about this. Let's talk about Lenny, naman ngayon, because I, I, because for me, there's a there's a tragic element to Pinoy. Eh? Uh, to to the Pinoy administration because I know he had great intentions and he did some very good things, but he didn't end on the best notes and it really pro- yes. provided the best opening for the Turtles to come in. Um, and then Lenny comes in; it's a different kind of political grief that takes over you because, I mean, the I mean, every time I put Lenny out there, Totka, you no, know, the one that got away, and you see all of the. Hindi na whining, it's a genuine grief that you see among a lot of our kababayan who never supported Liberal Party or even Pinoy, but but they love genuinely Lenny. Ito yung tinatawag ko na pure pink. Ito yung mga bumoto kay Lenny na hindi bumoto dun sa Liberal Party candidates last elections. There's just something about it. Um, uh, 
Ronald, so I, I want to talk to you about it. What is your reading of Lenny? Were you surprised by her becoming the vice president, beating no less than Marcos Jr., and then how she navigated the Duterte era and ended up as first runner, at least in last year's elections? San Yung, where is the good stuff and where is the not so good stuff? And what is the lesson from that? Yeah. Siguro by comparison, Richard, baka mas malapit si Lenny kay Cory. No? Bagamat naging congressman siya. Oh, yun yung branding. Siya. Kasi weeds. No, yeah. you know, Saka bag bagamat nagkaroon siya ng experience as a congressman before, pero talagang uh, wala siya masyadong political experience. no? Si Pinoy kahit pa paano meron eh. ba? Diba? Uh, he's a Latino and a Kohanko. So when he was growing okay. up, naoobserbahan niya yung mga power dynamics of this uh, of, of his family, no? Ikalawa, naging kwanse, eh. naging congressman siya, naging senator siya. So meron siyang mas marami siyang political experience kaysa kay Lenny, no? Uh, yun yung uh, siguro kaibahan niya. Kaya in a way, baka mas uh, uh, kahit hindi siya prepared to be a president, baka mas may wherewithal siya, no? Uh, to be what he became when he was president. No? Uh, si Lenny was very reluctant. Eh, no? uh, naging congressman siya dahil namatay yung kanyang asawa. Even more diba? reluctant than Pinoy, just to put in the context. Yes, yes. Even more reluctant. No? Tapos nung tumakbo for president, she was too late. Bakit? Dahil ayaw niya. Eh. No? Naalala ko pa mismo yung pagtakbo niya ng vice president, last minute yun eh. Diba? Ang, ang kinakausap nila for vice president, si Grace Poe. Eh. Diba? Si Lenny, ang tagal nang usap sa kanya, ayaw talaga niya. Sincerely, ayaw niya. No? Tapos na naging vice president siya, medyo pinuruhan siya ni Digong. Eh. No? Our, the most popular president in our history. No? Uh, tsaka yung pinakabarumbado. Pinuruhan si Lenny. To the extent of even harassing her. Diba? Binigyan siya ng portfolio sa cabinet, tinanggal siya. Tapos may mga sexy uh, jokes at saka kwan sa kanya. No? Yung medyo hindi maganda yung sitwasyon ni Lenny as part of the Digong cabinet and, and as vice president. Dinemonize siya. Dinemonize siya. And in a way, it took its toll on her. Kaya siguro ayaw din niya tumakbo as president. No? Uh, Meron mga talks for unity. Uh, I think seryoso siya na uh, hindi lang siya dapat yung, yung choice. No? And when he find she finally decided, it was the filing. It was uh, practically the start of the campaign. No nagpasya siya. While alimbawa si Bongbong was preparing much longer, years, no? At yung pagsama ni Sara sa pagsama ni Sara sa kanya, hindi lang binigay kay BBM yung Duterte brand, which was the dominant brand at the time, kung hindi yung resources ng isang incumbent including the commission election no so uh, medyo iba yung uh, yung nangyari kay Lenny kaya mauunawaan ko bakit ngayon talagang totally ayaw na niya except perhaps Naga no except perhaps Naga yeah. no? so yun yung yun yung kaibahan ni Lenny kay Pinoy Pinoy was not that reluctant bagamat pinag-isipan niya maigi bagamat hindi rin siya ganoon kahanda no nung nag-decide talagang uh, tuloy-tuloy siya no uh, uh, ako nga dong campaign nakasama sa special ops eh. no nung uh, 2009 no ah uh, siyempre kalaban mo the longest serving president since Marcos si Arroyo no so so ganun no uh, uh, hindi pa natin pinag-uusapan yung weaknesses ng campaign too many messages too cluttered habang si Bongbong ay very focused no yun yung iba pa yon no pero ito yung kaibahan ni Lenny ke ke Pinoy. She's not really a politician, that's what you're saying. Or she didn't have Basically, she didn't yeah. have the preparation. I mean, yeah. for me kasi this is a talking dilemma and obviously know who's the next person we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about Risa Antiveros, right? But before mm -hmm. we go to Risa, the thing kasi with Lenny is she really has a she has charisma, right? I mean, this is, she's She's mm. the stateswoman that, who doesn't have what a politician should have, but she has a charisma. I mean, the, the 15 million plus who voted for her. I mean, my goodness. Now you post something about Lenny, she'll get the most engagement online or Twitter, etc. Whether positive or negative, but mostly positive if it's in if Twitter. 
you don't get that with BBM. Like BBM is like so so, right? And 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 with yeah. Saka, she's it's even you know withdrawing from the field to play it safe for 2028. No, so there's just something about Lenny because I think she's she's a symbol of the Philippines that could be. And as someone, a, a friend of us said, you know, if Norway tie or New Zealand, she would have been our prime minister, except we're not Norway, New Zealand. That's why I disagree. But but you get what I'm saying? Like, parang, there's almost something magical or fantastical about her that that makes people very attached to her. Uh, but at this, so, yun nga, and don't parin yung 15 million nga. I think that if any moment Lenny comes out and says something about politics, I'm sure the excitement will, is, is going to be very strong. But but my my sense is there was there's no maximization of that either for any Lenny plans in the future or for the opposition in in, in total because 15 million of votes was more than 20 percent of the total votes which is not small in a parliamentary system as we discussed in the past that could put you in a position to take over the prime minister's office right as we saw almost in Thailand as we see in Germany for instance 20 percent plus that that puts you in a you know pole position. But param for some reason I didn't see mobilization of that pink movement. That that I think it's really a Lenny thing. It's a, it's really really a Lenny thing. No, but but Lenny seems to be focused on angat buhay for now. So I don't know. Maybe I'm just asking too much. I I sometimes I feel bad. I feel I'm being mean to to people in opposition, etc. By calling out that some of the whininess and and denialism. But but this comes from a place of concerned because I, I know the opposition can do better. And, and I was really glad to hear your views on this. But can you share that to our our audience? Because a lot of our followers, I mean, let's just be honest about it, are uh, what you can call the kahampings. No? These are people who engage politics because of Lenny, not because of Aquino, not because of liberal party. Really, it's Lenny. It's really Lenny that brought them into politics and they're still very interested. Let's go. I mean, you can yeah. say I'm a bit emotional about yes. this, but my mind is going different. A part of me wants yeah. to be off and a part of me saying like, but she has done so much. She has sacrificed a lot. I mean, you could see that she yeah. went through a lot. Because I saw the picture from Sona 2016. You know? She was this young, fresh, aggressive. Uh, um, and now you can see, you know, she's trying to get the respite and recovery. And I'm glad that Mam Lenny is taking care of herself because I know how hard the six years was for her yeah. uh, during the Duterte era. Well, Lenny was a lot of things. No? Hindi lang siya isang singular symbol. Una, no? naging siya yung naging successor ng kanyang husband si Jesse Robredo na probably kung hindi namatay could have also been a presidential timber di ba at iba yung pinanggagalingan ni Jesse Robredo dahil hindi siya talaga kasama sa political elites eh. di ba outlier siya eh ano ba siya at naging simbolo niya is yung chinelas di ba at yung kanyang department ay isa sa biggest department sa gobyerno, DILG. Some might even say, yun yung little president rather than the executive secretary. So, uh, minana ni Lenny yung ganong klaseng mantra. No? Ikalawa, yung, dahil wala namang kandidato yung, uh, yung Aquino, sa kanya napunta yung mga elements ng Aquino. No? Sa kanya napunta. No? Sa, sa kanya... At ikatlo, yung anti-Marcos sentiments ay siya yung naging rallying point. No? No, no, no. Pero panghuli, yung kanyang uh, yung kanyang image na disavowing power no? also became very attractive. Parang naging simbolo siya nung hindi uhaw sa kapangyarihan. Eh. Naging simbolo siya nung ayaw sa kapangyarihan for its own sake. Di ba? At hindi yan nawala sa maraming kabataan. Yung kanyang 15 million plus votes, that, yan yung boto ni Pinoy when he won. That was almost the vote of Duterte when he won. 16 million votes. So, so I agree with you, hindi yan maliit. No? Hindi yan insignificant. Pero mas mahalaga is the quality of that 15 million votes. These are volunteers. Eh. Ito yung mga hindi hinahakot sa mga rally in their hundreds of thousands, even in their millions. No? Yan, yung, yan yung mga kone. Yan yung hindi ka masyadong gagastos. No? Hindi mo sila bibigyan ng pagkain, ng pamasahe, ng allowance, ng mga paraparnalya. No? Yan yung mga dadalin yung sarili nila at yung kanilang pamilya sa rally. Ito yung essence ng EDSA. Before. Diba? Yan yung essence. Eh. 
nakakala mo na wala na. After more than 30 exactly. years ng weaknesses ng liberal democratic institution. Nandyan pa pala. Ang problema, Richard, ay after the election, walang attempt to consolidate that. This could have been the new opposition. Ito, itong, ito, 15, 16 million votes na basically volunteers, basically young people. No? Sana naglibot sila, no? si Lenny, si Risa, si Bamakino, the campaign manager, para sa isang nationwide Thanksgiving no? Thanksgiving tour. At the same time, a listening tour. Ano na ngayon? No? Ano na gagawin natin? No? Town hall style. And, no? Town hall style. Yes, town hall na listening tour. Tapos, nagpapasalamat ka dahil sa nangyari, no? sa kanilang voluntarism, etc., etc. Pero looking forward, what is to be done? Diyan naman papasok yung mga katulad natin. No? Pagkatapos, mapukaw nila Lenny, ni Risa, ni Bamakino, then organizers will now follow through. Build a network, core groups, no? uh, leaders, new leaders. No? At ito yung dadalin mo sa midterm. No? Halimbawa, marami dyan, baka pwedeng tumakbong SK or barangay officials, counselors, this October. Kung, nat- kung nangyari yan, ha? and then prepare uh, for a slate sa midterm. No? So, yan yung mga kinulang. No? I'm not sure if it is too late. I doubt it. Hopefully. No? Pero kailangan gawin yesterday. No? Kailangan gawin immediately. No? Yun, yung, yun yung pwede. Dahil Marami, marami dyan sa mga volunteers na yan. Itong 15, 16 million voters ay nandyan sa baba. Disenchanted, angry, bitter. Pero naniniwala pa rin na the Filipino people deserve something more. No? They're not clear what. No? Walang leader for now. No? Yan yung mga kailangan natin gawin. Pero the potential remains. No? I'm not that cynical to think na wala na yan. It's still there. Diba? Pero some leaders have to scale up to harness them. Some leaders have to scale up to organize them. No? Yun yung, yun yung kwan eh. Kaya naniniwala ko, katulad mo, na nandito manggagaling yung pag-asa for the future. Hindi maliit yan, ha? 15, 16 million votes. Mostly volunteers, mostly young people. I don't know, we saw it, right? Dun yeah, sa yeah. Paris, Pasi, I was, I was Pasi, surprised. Sabi ko ka Randy ever. David. Randy, it's ngayon ko lang na, nakita ito ulit it. since EDSA. Exactly. No? exactly. Kanya-kanyang gawa ng placards, uh, kanya-kanyang bumps, t-shirt, diba? kanya-kanyang costume. Ang daming mga cosplay doon eh. <laughs> no? Na mga, na mga kwan. So, tapos, hindi umalis for hours. No? Seven, eight, ten hours. Halimbawa, yung last... Yung sa Makati, that was more than 12 hours. Nung natapos yung programa, ayaw pa ako malis ng mga tao. No? Nandun pa sila. So ito yung, ito yung energy na kailangan natin. Ito yung dynamism na dapat natin i-harness. Dito natin ikakal yung new leaders. No? Yung new leaders. Perhaps hindi pa sila pwede for Senate. Perhaps hindi pa sila pwede for Congress. Pero baka pwede na sila sa barangay, sa SK, mayor. no, etc. sa municipal mayor, sa mga municipal councilors, provincial board, baka ganung level, no? And if you can create that kind of mass, that kind of network, that kind of motive force, no? Then I think the future is ours. Yeah, then eventually, exactly, eventually yeah. yung biktima ng disinformation, ng fake news, uh, yung biktima ng mga false promises, no? eventually that will be very open for organizing. No? At itong 15 to 16 million, ang iyong motive force to reach out to this other 15 million. No? Yun nga, Ronald. That's why for me, it became my... Uh, inexplicable mission to call out some of the gatekeepers out there, you know, the the influencers of supposed opposition who have been spreading toxicity, who have been blaming voters 
I mean, alam mo, the whole nonsense about, ah, oh, kasalanan ng voters yan. Ganun. Like, I just feel that's that's what's holding back the opposition. And if there's one disappointment I have, perhaps I'm being unfair, is that, you know, the kinds of, the type of leaders like Lenny haven't called out these people. There was some attempt by uh, the uh, Robredo daughters during elections, but the problem is I saw a lot of the toxicity after elections, especially the first six months, to a point na bati ako, bati si Vico Soto, I mean, lahat kinakancel na kami, <laughs> di ba? Because we didn't buy their version of denialism. Na lahat yan, ginawa lang ng hocus pocus yan. It's like, isn't that what they tried to do to Lenny? Like, where's that? <laughs> and then yung Google Trends and all of that uh, clown show. You know what I'm saying? And then, and then you know, attacking us as parelevant, etc. It's like, what? what parelevant kami? So we're just trying to help. Diba? So I, I just felt there's this group of gatekeepers, bloggers, whatever there, who are holding the opposition back because they're spreading negative energy rather than perspective. And this is the perspective. The, the reason why I didn't give up on the country after elections, I didn't have PTSD. In fact, you could see me. I kept on writing more and more. Is because <laughs> I never forgot the hundreds of thousands I saw from Roas Boulevard to Makati. To, and then I, I saw nothing but opportunities. Like, oh my God. This is the future for the opposition of the Philippines. This is the future for the country. Maraming may gusto, but but we, the flock needs shepherds. Maybe not one, but multiple shepherds. And and speaking of shepherds, well, one of them was successful in last year's elections, which proves that the election was not totally <laughs> focused. And that's Riza, uh, Riza, uh, Riza Hontiver. Almost <laughs> Riza Araneta. Well, I don't know, but I'm, I'm sorry. Like I said, Ronald, and dami kung ano eh. I had a lot of fights on Twitter over the past six months and all because I was really calling out one by one all of these toxic anonymous no one is calling out these clowns ako naman medyo mayabang like oh you want to take me down let's go thanks for the engagement right so medyo makapal ang mukha ako so I took on them kasi, kasi mahina sila sa Facebook, YouTube, no? Pero sa Twitter kasi malakas talaga yung mga iba dyan, eh. So I took on them their own platform. Inisa-isa ko silang lahat. And unfortunately, nagkalatin ako. Ay, syempre, tao lang tayo. Nainis lang ako. I said stupid things. But I just felt someone had to be stupid enough like me to do it because sila yung nag-hold back, eh. And, and to be honest, this conversation, uh, Ron, it's not about you and me. It's, I'm just trying to show to the people, saan tayo galing when we give these advices. Hindi tayo nagmamaganda, hindi tayo nagpaparelevant. Uh, at we're not here to stress out Lenny. I, I know Lenny deserves all the respite and all, but she's part of history. So many people love her. Or, or, every time you say something about Lenny, there's so much. I have friends in Singapore and other countries who love Lenny. They're not even Pinoy's, right? So there's so much to Lenny that... I'm sorry to say, but Lenny, like, kailangan ka in whatever capacity, right? But in the meantime, you have Riza Hondiveros, right? Uh, someone, you know, we all share a history with, you in the Akbayan uh, uh, movement, etc. And she's she's a senator. She's doing very well. We saw that she topped even a survey in Davao Yata. <laughs> uh, yeah. As the best uh, senator out there, um, Rafi Tulfo has a good relationship with her. Coco Pimenta has a good relationship with her. She seems to be navigating the very complex field very well. Uh, we, Of course, we we met recently with Risa. She looks strong. She looks fresh. She looks energized. I don't know. That gives me hope. That makes me happy. She doesn't look like a leftist. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so... What is what is, what does the story of Riza Hondiveros say also about the hope? Because the ginawa kong title sa space is Philippine opposition may pag-asa pa, and for me, absolutely. So let's talk about Riza Hondiveros here. Uh, na, and the future of hope. Nakalimo, yeah. Nakalimutan ko na kung saan talaga yung mini series na narinig ko ito last week. No, ang sabi to sa isang mini series sa Disney. No, a crisis is an opportunity which you haven't discovered yet. So this crisis of the left, this crisis of the opposition, Tinko is a good opportunity to reinvent a new political movement. No? Uh, galing sa embers nitong pink wave. Galing sa embers nitong uh, uh, last election. No? Na tingin ko ay marami yung pwedeng tumubo. No? Marami yung pwedeng mag-grow dito sa embers na ito dahil hindi na matay yung apoy eh embers nga eh <laughs> no so kailangan lang uh, lagyan ng kindling eh para umapoy uli no yun yung yun yung mahalaga at uh, yung mga tipo ni Risa tipo ni Labiko 
yung pwedeng harbingers nitong bagong political movement na ito eh, no? Ah, uh, tanggapin na natin, the old opposition is almost dead. 'Di ba? Anong naiwan sa Liberal Party? Six congressmen who are divided into three groups. Isang congressman na sa minority na ang tawag ng president ng Liberal Party is Kirol. Dahil ang nagtayo ng minority yung speaker din. No? Yung presidente ng Liberal Party, si Edsel, ay kasama sa independent minority by himself. Siya lang nag-iisa. No? Tapos yung four of the Liberal Party are member of the majority. No? Ni Martin Romualdez. And most of the Liberal Party ay lumipat na ng iba't ibang mga partido. No? Uh, uh, si yung Tiga Marikina no? ay nasa lakas na. Uh, yung isang uh, leader, nasa, marami na sa NUP. No? Hindi ko alam kung may pumunta sa NPC. So, nak- nakakalat na yan. But they are practically just six. Mas lalong kaunti sa mga LGUs. So, uh, this crisis is an opportunity for other new forces to grow. No? Yun yung mahalaga. No? Uh, uh, for lack of a better example, somebody like Biko, who will be uh, running for his last term as mayor in the midterm. Pero very open na yan sa 2028. Risa will run for something probably higher sa 2028. But he, she's doing good as a senator. Respected siya kahit ng majority sa Senate, kahit ng Senate President. They deal with her. No? Dahil nakikita nila, hindi lang siya disente. No? Meron siyang uh, wherewithal political to be a good action, senator. Political to be a good senator. Uh, diba? Yun yung kwan. Sa mga surveys, not only in Dabao, yung isang survey na nakikita ko na internal pa lang, 